There we go. We're recording. So welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic episode, I don't even know anymore. Let's call it 4,830. I, I don't know. It's a lot. We've been doing this since mid-March and we'll continue to do it as long as, as long as the pandemic goes on. So I hope you find this your your respite away from the craziness for a couple of hours on a Saturday night, okay? So you heard me say I'm recording. I hit the record button on Zoom. When we're all done, I will, depending on my rural internet, I will post it up tonight, post the video tonight, maybe tomorrow. Again, rural internet but I will post the video up on YouTube so you can refer to it later, share it with your friends, do it again at some other time. With that said, sometimes painting doesn't always work out for us. Happens to me, right? Things will just start to get frustrating and I'll be like, oh, this, this is just not fun for me right now. If that happens, put your brushes down, put them, put them in the water, wash them up, and just sit back and relax for a little bit, knowing that you can come back to this video later, right? If you feel I'm moving too fast, don't stress out. Wait till you can go back to the video later, then you can pause it and move at your own pace, okay? All right, so we should be done. We usually get done somewhere between 8.30 and nine o'clock. This one, there's a lot of little details. So it might be a little closer to nine o'clock, so about two hours. So uh, first things first, let's go through our supplies. I always like, if we were in the studio, I would like to run through supplies and make sure you have everything you need. Well, we're all at home. I'm at home, right? You can see I'm not in my studio. I'm at home. Um, I'd like to make sure that you have some version of what I have. I'm rambling. Let's do supplies. Okay, paint shirt or apron. The paint that I'm using, and if you got paint from the studio, the paint that you're using is acrylic paint. It's student grade acrylic paint, water-based, water soluble. You get it on your clothes and it dries. It's a bear to get out. It'll wash off your body, but it's really hard to get out of um, fabric fibers, right? So make sure you have a paint shirt on. If, you, if you're with a friend right now and you don't have a paint shirt, run to the bathroom, flip your shirt inside out. It's better to get paint on the inside than it is to get it on the outside. Um, if you do get paint on clothing or fabric because we're at home, right? So if you drip paint on the carpet, my guidance to you is let it dry. A little bit of Murphy's oil soap later. Murphy's oil soap is an artist's best friend. A little bit of Murphy's oil soap later, spray it on there, leave it set, come back to it later or in the morning with a toothbrush and some warm water and it'll come right out. That's how I clean my brushes too. I soak them in Murphy's oil soap. Since we're talking about that, if you're gonna clean brushes in Murphy's oil soap, put just this much in like a, a coffee cup or something and leave your brushes soak in just that much. Not so much Murphy's oil soap that it gets up past the bezel of the brush onto the handle. This is a pressed fitting. This is a glued fitting. If the Murphy's oil soap gets in there, it'll break down the glue and your brush will fall apart. So just enough to cover those bristles. Little tip, I'm full of tips. However helpful or unhelpful they may be. Okay, so I have a paint shirt, I have an apron. I've looked around to make sure I don't have, you know, a couch cushion or something. I'm super concerned about getting paint on. Let's go ahead and take a minute and check our area now before we get started. Canvas. So we have, oh, I have my inspiration painting here. So we have a 16 by 20 canvas. I'm gonna set this out the way. You may have a different size canvas. It's okay, entirely up to you. You paint on whatever you want. But if you got supplies from the studio, this is what you have. 16 by 20, stretched, 
attached, wrapped around, stapled on the back. Um, I will try and remind you to paint your edges. You don't have to, but it looks nice if you do, right? So when I say edges, we're gonna paint that sky. You're gonna to wanna to make sure and get up there and paint that top and the left and the right. You don't have to paint your edges. If you don't wanna paint them, don't. But what you don't wanna do is start painting your edges and then stop. That looks messy and unfinished. So one way or the other, paint them or don't, there is no halfway, okay? All right, so 16 by 20 canvas. Decide now, are you gonna stay vertical? Or are you gonna flip it landscape? Or are you gonna flip it horizontal? You could do this painting either way, right? It's up to you. I'm gonna stay vertical because I, that's the inspiration, our inspiration picture. That's the way it is, it's vertical. And I'm gonna try to stick with that. Um, but think about where you're gonna put your painting when you're done. Um, do you have a spot like above your mantle where you're gonna put this that will accommodate landscape better? Well, then that's what you'll do, okay? So apron, paint shirt, canvas, um, you need a water cup. I like to use an old mason jar. Old coffee cups are awesome too because they're heavy. They're less likely for you to knock them over as opposed to like a solo cup, a plastic cup. So I like something heavy. I'm less likely to knock it over. And you can see I use this all the time, which means I'm less likely to drink out of it, to accidentally drink my paint water. You would think that doesn't happen, but it does. Halfway full with cool or cold water, never warm or hot. Warm or hot water does something weird to the paint in your brushes. It like dries the paint too fast in your brushes. So cool or cold, okay? Paper towels, I've got a stack of paper towels here underneath my paint cup, underneath my water cup to dry my brushes off on. And then brushes. So my brushes that I have tonight, I have a big fat brush. Looks like it could use some Murphy's oil soap. Looks like it could be clean. But I love the brushes when they start to get a little, a little worn and they spread out because then they hold a lot of paint. So I have a big brush. I have some kind of a medium brush, right? This one, he's probably about a quarter inch wide. He's thin that way. And then I have um, a round, a small round. This is probably a number five if you're looking at numbers, but just something that I can do detail with, okay? So those three brushes. When I'm not using my brushes, while I'm painting, they're gonna live in my water cup, okay? I'm just gonna dump them in there and leave them there. That's a good reminder that when I'm done with the brush, goes back in the water cup with his friends. Now, when class is all over, I'll take these and clean them out really good, warm soapy water, dry them off, lay them flat on some paper towels to dry. But for now, they're gonna stay in my cup. Uh, something else you might have, I have a liner brush that's really, really, really tiny, just because, I don't know if I'll use it, we'll see. You may not have one, that's okay. Paint pen, I like to keep a paint pen in my bag, in my paint bag. I am really bad at signing my paintings with my paintbrush, so I like to have a paint pen to sign with to get my signature on at the end. So something I keep just in case. And then paint, let's talk about paint. So I like to use a paper plate because acrylic paint, once it's been dumped out on in the air, it's pretty much done. You could try to save it, but it's really not worth it. Um, it'll develop a skin on it. It's, you'll have dried chunks in it. So I put just what I need on a paper plate, knowing I can always get more. And then when I'm done at the end of the night, I'll just throw this away. Um, I've had people tell me they think that's wasteful. If this were my professional grade paint, and maybe we'll talk about that later, I have, I have a different method for that. I would try to save my professional grade paint because it's much more expensive. But anyway, this is student grade. So here we go. I have, let's go through our colors. I have white. I like to use block out white. 
I have a chrome yellow or a bright yellow. Any, any version of yellow will work. Bright red, any version of red will work. I'm using phthalo blue, any blue will work. Phthalo green, again, any green will work. I have um, burnt umber, it's just a nice milk chocolate brown, and Mars black. So that's what I have on my plate tonight. Okay. So let's talk about the direction. Oh, almost knocked it over. Let's talk about the direction we're going to go. I always like to, to let you know how we're going to handle this. So when we paint something like this, we paint the, the big pieces first. And we usually start further away. And then we work in getting closer. So further away, big blocks of color and then closer to get more detail, more detail, more detail. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna sketch our horizon line. We're gonna put our house on there. We're gonna put our sky in, paint our ground, paint the house. By jumping around like that and painting different areas, it's gonna help things dry in between. I usually get the question, do we need a blow dryer? I don't think we'll need a blow dryer tonight. There's a lot of detail and a lot of hopping around and that will give the section that we just did time to dry, okay? And then we'll, we'll work on those fine details at the end. So that's enough chitty chat, let's get started. All right, so the first big block of color I wanna do is my sky. I'm gonna start by sketching my horizon and my house with my sky color. It may seem odd to do that, but trust me, stay with me. Okay. If you have new brushes, which I know a lot of you do, you're gonna wanna make sure and work those brushes in that water cup a little bit. I'm tap, tap, tapping in the bottom. New brushes, when they come from the factory, they come with a starch on them that keeps them nice and stiff. And you wanna get that out of there. I do this with my older brushes because they have a little bit of dried paint residue in them and I wanna soften them up a little. Oh, just so you know, I have everyone on mute. That way the video stays on me, which makes it easier for recording and it doesn't hop around. If you have questions, type them in the chat box in Zoom. Don't hesitate to type your questions there. I have a laptop set up over to the side. You see me looking to the side. I'm trying to keep an eye on my laptop. So as questions come up, may not see it right away, but I'll catch it, okay? Big brush, big brush. Dry it off on your paper towel. And again, I'm gonna start with my sky color to do my sketching, to lay this out. Anytime you take paint, we always go in the edge, never the middle of the puddle, right? You don't want to mess the whole thing up right away. You always go in the edge. So I'm going to start with the tiniest bit of blue, teeny, teeny, tiny, like barely, barely any blue. And a little bit of white. I'm just looking for a light blue to do some sketching. And I'm going to go a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. So tiny bit of blue, you're gonna find that phthalo blue is real powerful. And let's start by putting our horizon on it. So let's see, down here about this corner, I'm gonna bump up and back down. Someplace for my house to sit. And these blue lines, I'm gonna cover them up with color later. You can see the blue line that I have in the original. It kind of acts as a shadow once I put white over it later. I'm gonna sketch my house with blue. You can't even see it once I put the brown over it, okay? If you see my TV in the background, I have Christmas Vacation going in the background, my favorite holiday movie. 
Um, so I hope you have your Christmas music on. I hope you have a movie going. Enjoy yourself tonight. Take a big deep breath. Let's go ahead and sketch our house on there. So our house is like the big focal point of this painting. So I'm going to find the middle of my canvas up here. And I want my house to be about a hand width from the top, the peak of that house. So I'm still using blue and white. I'm going to put a little mark there. I'm, again, I'm going to go a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. You stay light blue, but I'm going to go a little bit darker. Okay. Kind of like the center. Mine's going to be off a little. Okay. So four fingers from the top. About find from your ground to the top. Find halfway, halfway down. And that's where your um, that's where your roof line is going to be about four fingers in. These are just general measurements, right? Everybody's is going to be different. But I want to make sure my house is nice and big and fills my canvas. So I'm going to step over here. And again, halfway between here and my, my ground line. Halfway is right about there. About four fingers in. Ish. And then using my white and my little bit of blue, I'm going to connect these lines. And the bottom of my house, if we look at the original painting, it doesn't go straight down. It's very whimsical. It kind of comes in a little. So from here, I'm going to come in here. Come in. And there we go. We've got our house on there. And again, mine's a little, mine's a little off. It's okay. I'm fine with it. That's um, it's part of being an artist is just accepting what happens. We're gonna roll with it. We don't fret about stuff. Okay. So now I have blue and white on my brush. I'm gonna take some more white. Again, you see I'm using in the edge of that white, so I'll have clean on this side later. So blue, tiny bit of blue and some white, and let's paint our sky. So every place that's not ground and not house, and I'm gonna do long vertical brush strokes. And if you had decided earlier to paint your edges, now's the time. And I think this is completely optional. I think I'm going to add a little bit of that phthalo green. I just a tiny, tiny bit. You can stay with white and blue. I'm going to add the tiniest bit of phthalo green because that's going to make my sky a little, it's going to give it a little bit of turquoise look. Yeah, I like that. This is my reminder to you that this is your painting. This is whatever you make it. Part of being an artist is learning the rules so you can break them. Well, learning the rules so you don't break them and, and mess everything up. But there aren't very many rules in, in art. Um, one of the rules is knowing what to mix. For example, you never want to mix uh, complementary colors, opposites on the color wheel, because that will give you poop, unless poop's what you're going for. So for example, on the color wheel, blue and orange, don't mix those, you'll get poop. Purple and yellow, poop. Red and green, poop. 
So let's keep going. Let's paint that sky all the way, all the way around blue and white and I'm adding green for giggles because I love that phthalo green. Gulp edges, get that tippy top. I love looking around and seeing everybody just painting away. Makes my heart happy. So while we paint, I like to be respectful of everyone's time. Um, 7.30, we'll move on. That'll give us about nine more minutes, nine, 10 minutes to do the sky. And I like to give you times that way, if you need to step away, you won't miss something when you come back. So 7.30, we'll move on. I'm so happy to see we have new, new faces here tonight. Any day we get to fling paint is a good day. And while I have everyone here early on, there will come a point that we'll call this painting done. Again, probably somewhere between 8.30 and nine o'clock. When that happens, when I call the painting done, I'll give you exactly one hour from, from finish to finish up your painting and then either private message me on Facebook, on the studio on Facebook, or email me a picture of you with your painting. If we were at the studio playing together, at the end of every class, we get together at the end and do a group photo. Well, since we're all uh, at home and safe painting through the pandemic, we can't do that. But if you send me your picture within an hour of the end of class, I will add it to a, a group collage and put it up on Crooked Door Studio Facebook and Instagram. And that'll be our group photo for the night. Now you can see, I didn't worry about covering up those blue lines. You can either cover it now with sky or cover it with the brown house, whatever you want. But we will cover them. And I'm gonna go ahead and take a minute and put my email address in the chat box in Zoom. So you can copy it, so you can have it to be able to send me your picture later. Again, you can private message the studio or email it to me. And my word of guidance to you is copy it down with your cursor and then paste it because it's spelled weird. Gets misspelled all the time. That edge. Again, you don't have to paint your edges, but you either want to paint them or not, one way or the other, not halfway. Because if you have a, um, and you start painting your edges and then you stop, it just looks messy and unfinished. <clears throat> And remember, if you have any questions, pop them in the chat box.
in about five minutes, we'll move on. When you're done uh, with your sky, clean that brush out. Oh, there's Emily and Lori. You guys are together tonight. Hi, ladies. There's Andrea. You must have come in late, sister. Oh, that's okay. Because you know I ramble for 15 minutes before we ever start. Okay, about four minutes before we move on. Oh, and Jessica and Kelly, I see you girls too. Hello. I bet you do have the first 15 minutes memorized because <laughs> it's the same thing every time. And it's funny, I've tried to shake it up a little and then I forget and I get off target and I'm like, nope, it's the script. It's the same way when we're at the studio, right? Before this whole thing started, I have that script I have to give and then, then we move on. Okay, so four minutes, 7.30, we'll move on. Wanna make sure that big brush is clean because we're gonna get ready and put snow on next. We'll put our uh, snowy ground on. And I'm okay if there's a little bit of blue left in my brush. I'm okay with that because that'll give me like some little streaks down there. Now, I don't want much, but if you look at the original, get real close, you can see there's little bits of, little bits of blue back in there, tiny, tiny, tiny bits. Oh, Andrea, I didn't get a chance to ask you, how was, um, how was your baby's doctor visit? Everything good? Okay, good, good, good. Because he did not look happy to be there. Oh, <laughs> I get that. I feel for him. My Gertrude has to go Monday and I'm, I'm not happy about it because she's special needs. And that means I love my vet, but that means I have to hand her over at the door. That makes me really nervous. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I got in. Um, no, um, Dr. Wooden, Casey Wooden at uh, Marysville Animal Care. The, the blue house across from uh, Mill Valley. I, I adore her. She's, she treats Gertrude like she's her own. And that's what I want in a vet. And we've had, because of Gertrude's special needs, we've had the conversation about when the time comes, I need you to let me know because I will hold her past her time. And she has promised that she will do that for me. So I, I adore her. Okay, one more minute, one more minute. Clean that big brush out. Oh, all good stuff. Well, fingers crossed that last one comes, comes back clear. Good, good. You know, when they get older, they just get random infections, like random stuff happens. Just like people, I suppose. <laughs> Again, just like people. <laughs> okay, there we go, 7.30. So I have my big brush, I've cleaned it out. Again, I'm okay if there's a little, a little blue left in there. So I'm gonna clean it out and dry it off. And then if you're looking for clean white, remember that's why we only take out of the edge of our paint. So now I can use over in this side and have clean white paint. And let's paint that ground in. 
and I'm actually going to come up and cover this blue line. And it's not going to cover completely, but it adds like a lovely little shadow. Go up to the bottom of the house and paint the rest of the way down. Paint that in white. And I always get the question, if my canvas is white and I want it to be white, why do I have to paint it white? So the canvas has come um, already primed with gesso and gesso is a flat white paint. The paint that we're using is the equivalent of like semi-gloss. So if you were to leave this and not paint it white and leave the gesso over time, it would look dirty. Um, if you got fingerprints on it, you couldn't get them off of there because it's the equivalent of flat white paint. That's why we paint walls with semi-gloss, right? So we can wipe them down. So that's why we paint it white, even though we feel it might be silly because it's already white. And then I'm taking the tiniest bit of blue. You don't have to, but I'm taking the tiniest bit of blue and doing some little streaks in there, just a little bit, because that blue's powerful. It'll take over. But I like just a little bit, because in, in the real world, right, the snow would pick up a reflection from the sky, right? So if my sky's blue, I probably should have just a tiny bit of blue down there. And then hang on to that brush. You don't have to clean it out for our next step because you're gonna wanna get a little bit of white in it, okay? On it, in it, over it. Yes, you want a little bit of white left on your brush. Okay, two minutes, two more minutes and we'll move on. Hang on to that, that brush. You don't have to clean it out because we're gonna get a little bit of white on our brush anyway. So I'm uh, I'm focused on my on behind me. Oh, absolutely, yeah, yeah. It's okay to get white in the house, absolutely. Because we're gonna use a little bit of white mixed in with the brown to to paint our house in next. Looking over behind me because my so Andrea and I were talking about our dogs. I'm looking over or talking about her dog. Looking over behind me, mine's, I don't know what she's doing back there. She's, she's rolling around all over the carpet. Who knows? Feeling silly. Okay, so another, another half minute or so. And again, I'm hanging onto my brush because it's got a little bit of white on it. Okay, so I'm gonna move on and paint my paint my house brown. So the paint, if you got paint from the studio and it's the same paint I'm using, it's student grade paint. Student grade means it's very transparent, means it's very inexpensive and I can buy, a, buy it by the bucket and it's great to learn with. But because it's, 
student grade and they thin it down, the pigment level is really low. So all of my colors are transparent except for black and white. We're gonna have to remember this later. So this is our first, it's the first time we're gonna use it. So to be able to get a nice solid brown house on there, I want it to be brown, but I'm gonna have to add a little bit of white to it because the brown is super transparent and I'll see all of my brush strokes. But if I add the tiniest bit of white, it'll make it more smooth, more opaque. Um, it just evens my paint out quite a bit. So we're gonna have to remember this later too when we go to put um, like the gumdrops on the top of the house because if I put yellow on top of a blue background without any white in it, you're gonna be able to see right through that yellow and my, my yellow gumdrops are gonna look green because you're gonna see the blue through them. And they're gonna look kind of funny. So we're gonna have to add a little bit of white to that yellow, okay? That's your, uh, I always like to tell people this, whenever you go to the art supply store, if you enjoy painting and you wanna go get your own supplies, people will go to the, to the art supply store, the craft store and see a tube of red paint that's $2. And it what looks like the same tube for $20. And they're like, why am I gonna spend 20 when I can just spend two? Well, the two most likely is student grade paint, which means the pigment's really low, which means you're gonna have, it's not gonna be solid, it's not gonna be opaque, means you're gonna have to use a lot more of it. That $20 tube of paint is more than likely professional artist grade paint. And that right out of the tube, you're gonna get these really solid, bold, lovely colors. So just so you know. Okay, so I have a little bit of white on my brush. I might even add just a tiny bit more, just a tiny. And then brown, a big old swipe of brown. And let's paint that house in. So I'm gonna make sure and cover my blue lines. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a, Give it a nice solid outline in that big brush. And once I have it outlined, I'm going to fill it in going up and down. So again, tiny, tiny, tiny bit of white and a big old chunk of brown. Oh, and Marie, you'll have to let me know how your mixing goes. I think um, by mixing, um, oops, went down in my snow. By mixing burnt, burnt sienna and raw umber, I think you'll probably get closer to the original color. It'll be a little more reddish, where mine is a little more, um, a little more cocoa. Okay, I come back, I've got a big old roll of paint there, a big old goober, I'll smooth that out. Because here in a little bit, I'm gonna wanna put um, white snow on the top. And if I have a big roll of paint there, it's not gonna dry, All right? So I'm gonna smooth that out to make sure I don't have any big goobers of paint. And then let's take that big brush when you're done, pop it in your water cup. I think we're done with the big brush for tonight. Unless you're not, I'm done with my big brush though. I'm just gonna knock some of the paint out of him and then just leave him in that cup. Okay. 
take a couple more minutes and then we're gonna move on to trees. We're gonna do trees next. There's Lynn. Hi, honey. I just saw you. <laughs> okay. So let's get ready and put trees on there. We'll talk about trees here for a minute. My trees, we're going to start with our pointy brush with our small round brush. And we're gonna put that, uh, put the backbone all the way down. So we have something to pull off of. And my trees, they're not straight up and down. Kind of like the house comes in, my trees follow that same line of the house. They're kind of crooked too. Now, again, your painting, you can do whatever you want, but I love the whimsical nature of these trees, that this line matches the line of that house, right? They're, they're the same angle. Okay. Oh, while I have this here, let's talk about this for a second. So my trees, if we look at my, my roof line right there, that's about how tall my trees are. This one I made a little shorter. I decided I didn't want them both the same height. But you can make yours the same height if you want, up to you. But they're going to be real close to that roof line. And then they're going to come down and they're going to set in the ground a little bit. Not on the ground, but down in. Ooh, maybe not quite an inch. Three quarters, maybe. Okay. So let's take our pointy brush your small round brush, clean it out, dry it off. And whenever I dry my round brush off, I dry it off like this across my paper towel to get it to a nice point. So I have that lovely little point to work with. I'm gonna take some brown and I'll do the same thing when I load it with paint, right? I drag it through and give it a real gentle twirl. And again, my tree is gonna be real close to my roof line. It's gonna come down in my snow, maybe half, three quarters of an inch. And it's gonna follow the same angle as my house. There we go. Oh, picking them up there just a little bit. And again, these are all suggestions. You do what makes you happy. But these are suggestions to have um, your painting look like the original. But I hope your painting doesn't look like the original. I hope it looks like your version. Would be boring if we were all the same, right? So my goal here is to show you techniques and then you go, right? My goal is to teach you the rules so you can break the rules. And I think this one's going to be a little shorter. I like the idea of having a taller one and a shorter one. Okay. And then I'm going to move to my medium brush. and show you how I'm gonna do, um, do trees. So think about the way a tree is made, right? Skinny at the top, they're long skinny triangles, right? Small at the top and then they flare out as you get to the bottom. Don't get too fat too fast, right? You can always go back and make that top fatter, but once you have a big fat tree at the top, Oh, you could do the candy cane forest. 
I love that. But once you make, sorry, focus. Once you make the top of the tree too fat, you can't go back from there, right? So start, start skinny. So I have my, my medium flat brush and I'm not going to use it fat ways. I'm going to turn it and use it skinny ways. So watch how I'm going to do this. I'm going to get nice and close. I'm going to start with just green and then I'm going to play a little bit. So just green, loading that brush up. And using it skinny way, so using it vertical, I'm going to start here at the top and I'm going to pull down and let go. I'm going to pull down to the left, pull straight up and down, and pull down to the right. You have to remember those straight up and down in the middle brush strokes. Otherwise, it looks like your tree has a hair part all the way down. So left, straight, straight, right. Left, left, straight, 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 right. Left, straight, right. Now, as we do this in green, you can see that brown, that, um, that brown line we put that trunk, you can see it right through there. I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. So let's do just green. So straight up and down, right, left, straight, right. Let's go. Let's go all the way down to oh, about the horizon line. Ooh, almost got too fat too fast. Come on, baby. Okay, so just in green, but you can see how incredibly transparent that green paint is. So now I'm gonna play a little. Lime is my favorite color. So I'm gonna take this brush with some green, that same brush, little bit of yellow, little bit of white, And using it the same way, vertical, I can come back now and put some, put some highlights in there with that different, with that lime green. And that will start to camouflage that trunk. So again, green, yellow, little white, Don't completely erase all that green back there, all that original green, but get in there and play a little bit. What if with this dirty brush, I just take white so it's going to be really bright now and get some random highlight brush strokes in there? That's fun. Okay. So now let's keep playing. I'm gonna head over to the other tree and do the exact same thing. I'm gonna start with just green and then mix a little um, green, yellow, white, and then just pick up white. Okay, so here we go. Don't get too fat too fast. Green and then a little yellow. 
yellow, the white. And then just white. Those different shades of green are just lovely, right? They make it so much more interesting than just plain green. Okay. okay, so we'll take a few more minutes. Let you work on those trees. And then I think we'll move into um, the snow on top of the house. So do me a favor, make sure right now that you don't have any big rolls of wet paint on top of the house. If you do, let's smooth those out so they'll dry. That's something I usually do with my finger. You can use a paper towel if you want, but when we're when we paint with a brush and we get that line it's really easy to have like a roll of paint and that will take forever to dry so i'm just going to run my finger down there and make sure if i do have a roll that i've smoothed it right out okay so it is 7:52 how about how about 8 o'clock that gives us eight minutes. Eight o'clock sounds like a plan. That'll give you time to get your trees done. Don't worry about the stars on the trees. We want to let those let those dry before we put the stars on. When we get closer to um, the end and doing more detail, we'll put the yellow stars on then. Okay. So let's make sure. Um, we don't have any wet paint there. We don't have any big rolls. Let's get that dry. You're gonna want some clean white paint for the next step. So I'm gonna have to go find, go find some clean white paint. And you might take this opportunity to clean your brushes and get clean water. So we can have some clean white snow on there. So that gives us seven minutes. So at eight o'clock in seven minutes, come back with, a dry roof, clean brush, clean water, clean white paint. Okay.
Okay, four minutes, four minutes and we'll be ready to move on. Clean white, clean brushes, clean water, dry roof. and hot cocoa. That does sound good. Hot cocoa sounds really good. I, was, uh, I wasn't raised in a house with cocoa. I was raised in a house with coffee. Everybody drank coffee, even us little ones. When we came in from playing outside, we drank coffee, it was a thing. Um, but grandma always made sure we had um, ice cream in our coffee to cool it down. Best thing ever. Okay, one more minute. Okay, here we go. So let's let's go ahead and put the snow on the gingerbread house. Okay. So our our snow icing and that'll help clean up that edge where the top of the house meets the um meets the sky. And if you can see any of that original blue line, let's go ahead and cover that with white. So let's put the snow on the roof and then we'll we'll pull some icicles down and then we'll work on some other things down here. We'll put all the white on. We'll put the white on the windows. You know what? Change of plans. Let's change our plan around a little bit. Everybody with me? Let's put that door on first so it can have time to dry. I think we need to put the door on. 
you've already started up here, that's okay. But I'm gonna go ahead and put the door on to give it time to dry. Completely forgot. I'm gonna take my medium brush with some brown and a little bit of black and I wanna put that door on. Tiny bit of black. So brown, tiny bit of black. Like I just changed like right in the middle. I had us all worked up for doing the white and then I'm like, nope, never mind. What happens? Lost focus. Okay. Brown, tiny bit of black. Let's put our door on. A big round, big ovally door and fill it in. Again, making sure you smooth out any big fat rolls of paint because you want it to dry pretty quickly. But we'll do other things while we're waiting on that to dry. There we go. Door. And now, now we're gonna move on to white. Now that we have that door on there and that door can be drying. So we can put the white around it in a little bit. Okay, medium brush, clean, dry, clean white paint icing on the roof. And what does your icing look like? Is it nice and smooth? Is it a little bumpy? I don't know. It's your gingerbread house, right? Whatever you want your icing to look like. I know if it were my gingerbread house, it would be a little messy because that's my world. My world is messy. There we go. That white is really nice to camouflage where the, um, it was a little messy there at the top of the house where the house came to the sky. So that white line just cleaned it all right up. Okay. Now, while we have that white on there, let's put some hang down icicles. I'm gonna continue with my medium brush and like we did with the trees, I'm gonna use it skinny ways. You don't have to use the medium. You can go to one of your smaller brushes if you want, that's up to you. But I'm gonna do just some, some hang down um, triangles. So they look like icicles. And if I use my brush skinny ways, I can accomplish that. Oops. I can just pull down. Some are longer, some are shorter, but they all pull straight down, kind of. As I look, mine are all leaning. Looks like the wind is blowing. So I'm gonna put icicles all along my roof line.
this is nice too because by the time my um, my icicles are done, I can go back and do a nice clean um, a new clean coat of white right along that roof line and make it really pop. Yeah. Oh, that's fun. Okay, so we're putting that roof on and those icicles. And at the same time, I'm keeping an eye on this, uh, on this door, checking right around the edge of it to make sure it's it's drying. I don't have a lot of paint on there, so it should dry pretty quickly, but we'll do that last. We'll make that our last bit of white that we put on. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put some windows on. And my windows, I'm still using that medium brush. I'm just using it skinny ways to draw with. I wanna put windows that are close to level with the, with the top of the door, unless they're not. Little crossbars in them. <laughs> that is so crooked and it makes me smile oh. because I paint to the side because I teach from the side all of my stuff goes downhill uh -huh. so let's see everything we're doing with bright white we have our roof we have our windows I'm going to put a red heart up here, a big red candy heart. And because all of our paint is transparent, the red won't pop if you can see that brown underneath it. So I'm going to put a white heart on there that I'm going to cover with red later. Again, this is your, this is your gingerbread house. You decorate it however you want but I want a big red candy heart on there. So I have to give it that solid base to live upon. And because my paint is transparent, I can add white to my other colors and brighten them up and make them nice and solid. I don't want to do that with red because a lighter red is pink. And I don't want pink, I want red. So red, I have to handle a little differently than I would handle the other colors. Red, I have to put a white base on. My other colors, I can mix white in. So my other reds that I have here, not too worried about the gumdrops, but I wanna go ahead and put a little bit of white where my chimney's gonna go. My candies, my other candies, my gumdrops and my M&Ms down here, not too worried about those unless you have a really dark blue sky, then you might put white behind them first. 
but I'm gonna go ahead and put my chimney on, medium brush with white, and my chimney is halfway, halfway on this side. It's just a little, a little rectangle. I'm gonna fill him in. Excuse me. Okay. I will paint that in red in a little bit. Let's see, what else can I do? I have my chimney, I have my roof, I have my icicles, I have the base behind my heart. I have my windows. I'm gonna go ahead and put a candy cane down here. It's gonna be hard to see because it's gonna go down into my white snow, but I'll know it's there. I'll be able to tell by the change in brush strokes. So I want a candy cane that goes right about there. Just white, we'll put the red stripes on it later. When your door, when the edge of your door is dry, you can go ahead and do your white outline around it. If your door isn't dry, don't worry. You can you can tackle it later. But I want to go ahead and do most of my whites now. I'm gonna go ahead and put a little little candy candle on there, little white circle. That will be a little uh, little peppermint. And then the other solid white I want to do. Um, I think I'm gonna to go to my uh, to my small brush and put my smoke out of my chimney. And then I think we'll be ready to move on to some color. So I've got my small round brush. And I'm gonna go ahead and do some white, white chimney smoke. Anytime we do swirls, my guidance to you is to do it and walk away. The minute you go back and try to fix where you think it's gone wrong, it gets fat and it's hard to find that same line again. So my guidance is to just go and let it happen and be done. And I will sometimes flip my brush to use the other end of it. And I'm not touching my canvas, but I'm like air writing to get the feel for where I want that smoke to go. It's like muscle memory, right? And once I have it, then I'm just gonna go in and do it. And you can see it didn't even touch here. I'm okay with that. I'm not going to go back and fix it. I'm going to leave it. Because again, when we start trying to fix, things get weird. So let's take a few more minutes and get all the white on there, right? 
and we're giving it some time to dry. And I think let's go back to our original and talk now about how, uh, how we're gonna walk through the rest of this. So we're gonna handle, now that we're getting into those details, we're gonna handle one color at a time. If I found if we jump between colors too much, if we do a red gumdrop, then go to a yellow gumdrop, then go to a blue, it, the rinsing our brush out and getting clean color, it starts to get messy and muddy. So I'm gonna handle all one color at once. The most that we have on here, the most, um, the most color we have is red. So I'm, I'm gonna do that first. So we'll do red and then I'll move on to yellow and do all the yellow bits. So the, um, the yellow gumdrops, the yellow stars, the yellow M&Ms, and then we'll go to green and then blue. So that's how, that's how I'm gonna approach it. You can approach it however you want, but that's how I'm gonna handle it. So I'm gonna start with red here in just a minute. Okay, so let's go ahead and put our red on there. So again, I'm going to do uh, my red chimney, my red gumdrops, my red heart, my red M&Ms, the stripes on the door, the swirl on the candy, and the stripes on the candy cane. I'm going to do all of those red bits and then go back to yellow, Go go to my next color. So whichever brush makes you happy, I think I'm gonna use my, my medium flat brush. I like that one. And we have our white background for a lot of our red stuff. Here we go. Paint that chimney in. Go ahead and put some red gumdrops on there. Okay, there we go. Red chimney, red gumdrops. Fill my red heart in. And again, as I paint this and fill it in, these are only suggestions. You make your gingerbread house however you want. Right? My goal is to just give you guidance, give you ideas, show you techniques. Okay. So chimney, gumdrops, heart. Ooh, I'm going to go ahead and put some, um, start with my candies down here. So my candies 
closer to the door, smaller they are. They're gonna get bigger as we head down, okay? So these little red ones up here are gonna be smaller, little ovals. This one's gonna be a little bigger. Even more, even bigger. This is the biggest scout here. That adds a little perspective. If you make them a little smaller toward the door and a little bigger as you head down. Oh, I think I need my my pointy brush. I think I need my my small round brush for my stripes around my door and my. Um, my candy cane. Stripes. Oh, so the question, did I do the gumdrops in white before the red? You know, I didn't. And you can see the difference. My chimney is nice and bright because I had the white behind it. My gumdrops are a little, um, they're a little darker because you can see the blue green behind them. So that's a decision you get to make. If you want your gumdrops to be nice and bright and stand out, put the white behind them first and let that white dry. Mine, I guess I decided it was okay if they were a little purpley. I'm okay with that. Good question. And this is the, this is the part where um, I tell you to trust the process. So my candy cane down here looks weird. He looks so weird, man. I'm gonna put some red stripes on him and he's gonna look kind of unfinished. At the end, we'll go in with some fine black outlining in random spots. And that will help pull my candy cane all together, okay? So just give him stripes now and then we'll worry about, um, we'll worry about outlining him here in a little bit. He looks kind of weird. He looks like he's kind of floaty. But I think, I think I have all my red on there. So I'm gonna rinse that brush out and I'm gonna move on to yellow next. Okay, I'd start my movie over. All right, so yellow. So for my yellow, I'm gonna use my medium brush because that's what's making me happy right now. Ooh, where is he? And the yellow, I'm gonna add a little bit of white to, to the yellow as I paint with it, okay? The red, I couldn't do that because it would turn pink. But the yellow, it's just going to make it a brighter, a brighter, lighter yellow. So white right there in the edge of my yellow. And again, use whatever brush makes you happy. And I'm going to put some yellow, yellow gumdrops on there. If your gumdrops look a little green, add a little more white. So yellow, we have gumdrops, our candies, our little M&M &M candies, and stars on our trees. And again, our stars 
kind of like the candy canes. They're going to look a little weird. At the very end, we'll give them just a hint of little black outline, and that'll make them really stand out. So yellow, little bit of white, stars on there. Yeah, it looks just kind of eh. But at the end, I'll add a little, little black outline and that'll make all the difference. There we go. And then some little yellow candies down here, some little yellow M&Ms. Little yellow, little white, smaller toward the door, remember. And bigger as we move down toward the bottom of the canvas. All about perspective. After yellow, I'm gonna to go to green. And my green, I only have a couple gumdrops and a couple candies and then blue last. And again, with the green, I'm gonna add a little bit of white just to make it pop. So this is the point of the class where if you feel I'm going too fast, I know we all move at a different pace, but if you feel I'm moving too fast, just take a breath, know you can come back to the video later. Okay, so green, a little bit of white, make that green pop. And the green, I only have a couple gumdrops and a couple, couple M&Ms. There we go. And my M&Ms. And it'll make sense here in a minute why we're doing the blue last. Okay. All right, now blue and a little bit of white. And the blue and white, I'm gonna start with my medium brush and then I'm gonna move to my pointy brush and I'll show you why in a minute. So I'm gonna do my blue gumdrops and my blue M&Ms. And then I'm gonna pause and make sure everybody's with me because I'm gonna show you what else I'm gonna do with the blue, okay? Okay, so I've got my blue gumdrops and my blue candies down here. Smaller, closer to the house. Bigger as we get down, down a little closer to the bottom.
Okay. So I'm going to move to my smaller round brush. And I'm going to use a little bit of light blue to make things a little more interesting. I'm going to give a little bit of a shadowing with some really light blue. It's one of those things you don't have to do. It's very subtle. I like what it does though. Oh my goodness. I just realized I'm missing my swirl in the middle of my doorknob. Let me handle that real quick. I forgot my little red, my little red swirl there. There we go. That's better. <laughs> I guess it could have been a could have been a mento instead of a peppermint, right? Okay, instead of a starlight mint. All right. So I'm gonna take some light blue, so some white right over here in my in my blue. I'm getting just a nice light, really, really light blue with my round brush, with my pointy brush. And now on the right side of every icicle, again, you don't have to do this. This is just me showing you what I'm gonna do. Down the right side in the white of every icicle, I'm just gonna give a little bit of a, little bit of a shading line there. It's so subtle, but it really does make a difference in the long run. So again, just down the right side of every single one of those icicles. So I've got my little bit of blue, my little bit of blue shading there in my icicles. I'm going to continue on with that pointy brush and light blue. I'm going to give just some little, just little shushes here in my, in my window. Right along that white, just a couple little blue, blue marks. It just makes it a little more interesting. So just a little shush. Gosh. Not covering that white completely, just giving it like a little bit of a blue tint. Okay, something else I'm going to do with that blue. I'm going to put a little bit of shading underneath each one of my candies. So I'm going to go right up underneath. Zoop. Oh, that's too dark. A little, little bit of white, too dark. So I'm going just right up under each one of those candies and it makes it look like, I don't know if the snow is a little scuffled under there. Oh, it just adds a little something so they don't look like they're floating, right? We have to give them a little, a little bit of shade right underneath them. Okay, right underneath each one of those. Maybe right here underneath my, uh, my candy cane too. And my whole painting is, kind of starts here in the middle and veers out. So that's the way I'm gonna shadow under my trees too. So I'm going to follow that same tree line with that blue and white. Shoop. And another little shoop. I might even play here up under my house a little bit. A little, little blue shoop. Little shadow marks there. Okay. I ran through that all pretty quick. So I'm gonna, 
I'm going to back up and talk through it again. And then we'll be able to move on to our next step. Okay. So again, it's optional. It just adds a little bit of something, I think, makes it a little more interesting. So pointy brush with a tiny bit of blue and some white. I'm looking for just a real light blue. I've gone down the right side of each one of my icicles. Little blue shushes on my windows. Little bit of blue shadow underneath each one of these candies. Little blue shadow right there, whoop, right underneath my candy cane. And some uh, shadows right underneath my tree. And you have to follow that same line that your tree is following, right? So if my tree is leaning out this way, the shadow has to be that same direction. Okay. Oh, fun. I love all those colors. Whew. So many colors. Okay. You guys were getting there. It's all about the details, right? From this point in, it's all about those little details. So I'm gonna continue on. Again, there's a lot to this. If you feel I'm moving too fast, just wait and come back to the recording later, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm going to uh, put some little uh, white dots on, my, on all of my um, gumdrops. Almost looks like uh, like the sugar glinting in the light. To do that, I'm going to use the other end of my little brush. I like using the other end of my brush so I can get perfect little dots. So how about seven on each one of these? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Just a rough estimate, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. On each gum drop, I have seven dots, seven little random white polka dots. One, two, three, four, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One more. So just little, little dots on all my gumdrops. I think I wanna do the same thing on, on my heart there in the middle. So again, I'm using the other end of my little brush, using it to make perfect little, perfect little polka dots. we go. And then don't forget to wipe your brush off so you don't put your hand in it, right? Okay. So we have a couple more things to do, right? We're getting, we're getting pretty close. I'm going to do, um, some white highlights in a couple places. And then I'm gonna do those black, um, those little black outlines that I talked about a little bit. So let's do some white, um, some little white highlights first. I'm gonna do some little white um, marks on my chimney and then little white highlights on all my candies. And then we'll talk about those black outlines. 
So let's see. Pointy brush. Clean it out. And dry it off. And with white, I'm gonna do a couple, couple little marks here on my chimney. Just makes it more interesting than just plain red. It's really nothing specific. And then on the top of every single one of my candies, I want to give a little, whoop, a little white highlight. Uh oh, what's going on? Oh, we do need glitter. Oh, I just saw the I saw the sad face or the scary face. I didn't see the the comment before. I thought, oh, what's wrong? But yes, you are correct. We need glitter. It's really hard to have a Christmas painting, a uh, a Christmas candy painting without glitter, isn't it? So again, just right across the top of each one of these, I'm just giving a little white. It's like a little white frown right across the top. Like that light is hitting the hitting the tops of those candies. So that's the only thing I've done with solid white right now. I did just some little marks on my chimney and a little bit of white right there on tops of my candies. And then I'm gonna go to that to uh, to black and do just those random little um, little outlines. So I'm going to take a few minutes here, a couple minutes. And the black outlines, there's, there's no hard and fast rule with where to put those black outlines, but you're going to want to put them around things to accent them just a little bit. You're not going to outline everything in solid black. For example, my stars on my trees, they just don't really, uh, they don't really pop. But if I add little black outlines around them, and they're messy little outlines, there's nothing perfect about them. It really accentuates what they are. The same with my candy cane down there, as I point with my cup. The same with my candy cane. Without the black lines, he's just kind of floating down there. But if I give him a little black outline, he really pops. My smoke, you don't really see my smoke coming out of my chimney. I mean, it's really, it's really um, vague, which is fine if you want to leave it that way. But if you add just little bits of black, whoo, makes a difference. Okay. Okay. So do you remember when I talked about the smoke, how you do it and then you just move away, move on, move on to something else. The black outlines are the same way. If you go back and you try to fix it, it gets big and fat and out of control, right? So we just do it and we move on. Okay. All right. So I'm going to take my, my little brush and I've got a really little brush for this. With black. And let's see, what do I want? What do I want to do? Well, I know I want to give little, little outlines to those stars. And that outline is so messy, but like if I get really close, you can see how messy it is. I'm accepting that that's what it is. I got way, way off my line there, way outside the yellow. I'm okay, right? I'm gonna leave it. Because once you get away from it, it all makes sense, okay? So don't get too hung up in trying to make it perfect. Just get those little, those random little outlines on there and walk away from them. That one's even messier. Exactly. 
is what it is, right? That's life. Painting is, is much like life. It is what it is. It's easier if you just accept it and move on. Okay. So we're getting really close to the end. I'm gonna keep working on all these little, these random little outlines. I wanna remind you, cause I think we have a couple people that, that joined maybe after I said this, that how about we call this painting done at nine? So by 10 p.m., I would love for you to take a selfie with your painting and either private message that to the studio, me personally, if we're uh, friends on Facebook, or email me and I put my email in the chat box. You might have to scroll up to see it. But all the pictures that I have by 10 o'clock, I'll collage those together and put them out as our group photo on, uh, on Facebook, on uh, Facebook and Instagram. Because if we were together at the studio, we'd get together for a group photo. But since we're not all together, that's a way we can still have a group photo, okay? So that gives you until 10 o'clock to finish your painting and get me, get me your picture. Okay, let's see, what else do I wanna do? So I did my stars. I feel like my chimney needs a little bit of, a little bit of love. Just a little bit to make it stand out. I feel like my heart needs a little bit of an outline. even know that I'm going to outline the whole thing. Here we go. A little bit in my um, in my swirls here and I'm not going to do a lot but I want to accentuate it just a little bit. You could outline your gumdrops if you wanted. Oh, the sucker. So I didn't do the sucker in the, in the other one that I did, but we can go ahead and do the sucker. If you want to do a sucker, let's do that. This is, this is optional. Let's take, with my pointy brush, I'm going to take a really dark gray for my handle. Okay. Where's my sucker gonna live? Right about here? It kind of balances out the, the candy cane. So I wanna put the handle in there and I wanna match that angle that I have from everything else. I'm gonna put my handle in here. Zoop. And then let's do a white circle and then we'll swirl some colors in there. Do it in white first. Ooh, nice big, nice big white circle. Oh, I feel like I need a, I need a shadow underneath him too. I need that little bit of light blue shadow. If everything else has it, my sucker needs it too. Zoop, little blue shadow. Okay. And let's see, you can take any of those colors that make you happy. So what if with my pointy brush, what if I use a little bit of blue and I start from the middle and I swirl that in and maybe some red. Start in the middle and I swirl that in. Oh, that's fine. And I think I'm going to stay away from green because red and green make poop, right? I might just stay with red and blue 
because mixing those together gives me a fun purple. Get a little more red, a little more blue. And then I'm going to stop because it's going to all turn into one solid color. I said it, but I'm going back in to give it a little outline. Maybe a little more white. So my word of caution to you on the sucker is be careful what colors you use. You can put yellow in there. You can put um, green in there, but you have to let that dry. Because if I put, um, it's turning purple. If I put yellow in there, that's a complementary color. I get poop. I have red in there. If I add green while that's wet, poop. So if you want to put more colors in your sucker, wait for that to dry. Okay. Let's see. Add a little white, a white highlight down the edge of my sucker stick. That gray is a little boring. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to go back to the black. And keep on with my with my random little outlines. Let's see. I need I do a little outline right up here around the door. Do a little bit of an outline around this candy cane. And again, that's what's going to pull it all together. Because right now it's just kind of float. That candy cane is. That little bit of outline really makes a difference. And I'm going to go with just a little outline underneath my can piece. Underneath the color, but above the blue. Above the blue shadow. So between the color on these candies between the color and the blue that we put underneath them. That's where the black goes. If you do black down there, you may decide you don't want to. Let's see, what else can we do? A little more of an outline around this. Okay. I might even do a little bit of black outline around the, the bottom of that sucker. Just makes it stand out, just pulls it out a little bit. Okay. I think, I think I've reached the end here. So you guys keep playing. I've done, I think all I wanna do here. As I keep looking at it, I'm like, what else do I need? Do I need another sucker over here a little, little bit lower? I think I might. I think I might. I think if I put a little sucker down here lower, that might balance it out. We'll see, but for now, I'm gonna call it done so we can stop the recording and so I can let you guys finish and keep playing. So when you're done with your painting, don't forget to sign it. Um, artists usually sign bottom left or bottom right. That's where my paint pen comes in handy. You can sign with a brush if you want with a small brush. Just thin that paint down with a little bit of water. It'll flow a lot easier if you thin it down just a little bit. If you don't wanna sign on the front, you can sign on the back. 
with a with a paint pen or a sharpie. If you do sign on the back, never here, always out here um, on the wood. If you sign here, it could bleed through to the front. So always out here. Okay. So I'm going to, yep, I'm going to call it done. I'm going to go ahead and sign mine. And I think if I sign it over here, it'll balance it out a little bit. And you get to decide what your artist signature is. Mine is S S blah, 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 with a little 20. So there we go, done. So don't forget to uh, take your picture, send it to me. You have until 10 o'clock and I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and then give you the opportunity to unmute yourselves if you want, if you wanna chat for a little bit. So for the recording, thank you so much for joining me. This has been a lot of fun and maybe, Maybe we might find some glitter for this because it needs glitter. All that red needs to be red glittered next time. All right. Thank you so much for painting through the pandemic with Shauna Sue from Cricador Studio.